Hey guys, Jim here. Just want to do a quick video on my uh, Wilderness Systems Radar 115 Kayak. Uh, just got in the uh, pedal drive, the Helix pedal drive system for it, getting that installed in the kayak and just felt like I had to go ahead and make this video. So anyway, I'm going to call it, I think, Ode to Engineers and in just a minute, you'll know why. So anyway, let's uh, let's talk about this new Helix pedal drive system. Um, I love the fact that the kayak is so versatile, where you can actually uh, install either motor drive or a pedal drive system, where the motor drive would go right here where the flex pod goes, um, and of course the flex pod would need to come out. I didn't want to do that because I wanted to keep my fish finder installed there. It's a clean installation. The battery is actually contained in the flex pod. And then, of course, my transducer is attached to the bottom. So when I put it in, transducer goes in the water, turn it on, it's good to go. Uh, when I get done using the kayak, all I'll do is undo the couple of uh, you know latches right here. Pull out the flex pod and take it with me, you know, wherever I need to, to keep it safe and uh, of course I decided to go with the pedal drive system because a couple of reasons uh, number one which I just mentioned it allows me to keep my fish finder mounted in the uh, flex pod so it stays in there I don't have to find an alternate you know mounting place for it uh, the fact that I fish in a lot of skinny or shallow water with the motor drive system unlike uh, with the the uh, Old Town 136 Autopilot, where you can actually pull a string and have the, you know, the drive unit pop up on the trolling motor, where you can get, basically make it zero draft. You can't do that with the Wilderness Systems. What you would have to do is actually slide to the front of the, the kayak, undo the, you know, the entire motor system and pull it up into the boat to be ordered to use your paddles or basically get the zero draft. With the Helix system, all you have to do is, once you get installed, which I'll have done today, but there's actually a pedal right here. I believe this is the right one, but once you've got it installed, you've got it down, you, you know, you're going where you need to go. If you do need to get in zero draft or, you know, get in the real skinny water, real shallow water, you just kick the pedal right here the whole thing pops up and all of a sudden you have zero draft which is a wonderful thing once you get in deeper water just take it be up here shove it back down it locks in place you got your propulsion system ready to go but oh and the other reason is for i uh i went with the pedal drive system is for the the instant anti-reverse which I don't think I could do with the motor drive system. So I fish a lot of these uh, tidal creeks and everything, and of course tend to catch, you know, larger fish. So uh, when I do hook one, because I'm fishing these creeks, tidal creeks, these uh, lagoons, uh, the back country, backwater, um, you know, and the, the creek mouths and everything, there's every chance in the world when you get a, you know, a large or decent sized fish that they're going to put you in the mangroves so with the pedal drive system i have instant anti-reverse all i have to do is start pedaling backwards and i can pull the fish out of the cover or you know whatever he happens to get into so it just gives me a better chance to be able to land that fish but back to the uh my impressions on the installation on this helix pedal drive system i know that wilderness systems i can't remember the name of the company but they contracted with a company to build the motor drive and the helix pedal drive systems for them where you have your choice you can you know you can paddle a kayak you can pedal it or you can use a, a motor electric motor propulsion which is in concept it's a great idea but I don't know what it is about engineers, you know, God bless them, but they don't think like the rest of us or most of them tend not to. So 
I really think that when this company got an opportunity to design these systems, you know, to be uh, basically compatible with certain wilderness system kayaks, I think these engineers got really excited because it's a chance to frustrate and piss off people on a global scale, which, you know, they probably didn't have before. But my hope is someday that these, uh, these engineers that actually engineer this stuff uh, would actually have to install and use the products that they engineer. In other words, you know, like on my hanger brackets here, when you install those, it's got a little tiny screw that goes through here and a little tiny lock nut, you know, a nylon lock nut on it. And in order to get that through here, you have to, of course, have your number one Phillips head screwdriver in the head of the screw. Try and get in this little tiny gap it's got here. And, of course, that's my irritation. Why in the world they put some little, you know, little trough in here to make sure that you can't get any kind of tool in there to hold that that nut while you you know you screw in the the screw it's ridiculous so it took me quite a while to you know because it took both hands i finally had to take a pair of needle nose pliers and just you know you can't really get the sides of the nut you have to jam it up in there to try and um you know basically keep the the nut from turning so you can screw in the screw and these nuts are so tiny, I dropped them, must have been a dozen times. And they're so small, I couldn't pick them up. You know, my fingers wouldn't, you know, wouldn't pick them up. So that's extremely, you know, frustrating. The other thing is, you know, with the, uh, the different packets they give you with the hardware in it, I'll end up missing like one screw where I, I end up having uh, three, but... I need four. So I end up having to go down to the, you know, actually go down to an Ace Hardware and search around, you know, waste time trying to find a screw that they didn't, you know, include in the package when they put it together. And a lot of these pieces are so small. I mean, if you breathe on them, you'll lose them. So anyway, that's one of the issues I'm finding. And of course, with most of these do-it-yourself kits, they tend to be more of a, uh, you know, rather than being an advantage or, you know, just cut and dry, they turn out to be like a, you know, a, a mission of uh, futility and more of a problem-solving exercise than it is a, you know, do-it-yourself, you know, easy install kit. So even some of the instructions you know on the installation of this thing are different from what you'll find from the wilderness systems representatives you know online when they talk you know actually show you step for step how to install these systems so i don't know if like this is this is what uh goes in the console here allows you to attach the motor drive you know this is a bracket for it it they put all these little, I don't know if it's for stability or what it is, but all these just little troughs, you know, places that make it extremely hard to get any kind of a tool in there to be able to tighten it or to actually put it together with, you know, any kind of speed and ease. So, I mean, when I look at this thing, I think of the skeleton of a passenger plane. You know, it's like, why in the world would they do that? You know, just to frustrate, irritate, and raise hell. You know, make it difficult to get anything done. But anyway, still working on it. It never goes like it's supposed to. Um, you know, it's always tougher than it's supposed to. But you know, I'm still excited about getting this thing in there. Uh, not trying to be negative, but I just find it very, uh, in some ways, entertaining. That's the way I like to look at it, you know, the way these engineers do things. If you've ever had to work on a vehicle or anything else, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, why in the world do you have to pull the engine out of a car to change the oil and filter? You know, it's just, it's poor engineering. But, I mean, that's just a fact of life, but something that nobody talks about or only talks about in select groups, maybe in a private setting, but... You know, reality is reality.
and that's the you know that's the truth of the situation so at least on my channel that's what you're going to get you know nothing scripted uh there's uh, nothing planned there's no sponsorships uh don't monetize anything there's no ads i don't do it for any kind of financial gain i do it because somebody needs to have a channel where they actually tell the truth on things and they're not motivated by exterior uh, motivations and forces that causes them to you know have to lie or go through a bunch of editing just to make everything look pretty you know when i know for a fact i mean i've been fishing well over 50 years and i know that things don't uh, always happen like they show on all these fishing videos so Anyway, just want to do a quick video on that. Once I get the pedal drive system in, uh, since I've been using uh, the Wilderness Systems 115 radar for the last two and a half months, and I've been paddling it, you know, manually, I'll be able to actually, you know, give an educated, you know, experiment, you know, experiments. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. But anyway, I actually tell you how it, it works compared to what I bought it for, you know, which is uh, fishing, you know, hardcore, dedicated, you know, fishing. And then once the pedal drives in there, I'll be able to give my, you know, honest opinions on that. So anyway, look forward to doing that. Have a great day and tight lines.